Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Farrier Michael Branson trims hooves of my three mini zebus. We're cutting the dew claws of my bull Rusty for the first time ever. And the feet too. Trimming and feet. trimming his feet. You can see how many people it's taking. And notice our shield. Kyle over here has a garbage can lid in his right hand in case Rusty wants to use his horns as weapons. It's his nature. Where's my shield? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we do have set up here a portable panel that could be a squeeze chute. But it seemed easier at this moment to just see if Rusty would lift his front legs for those dew claws and for trimming the hooves. We've got a lariat around his horns, a halter on his nose. These are portable panels without uh, posts in the ground, but they seem to be holding. My farrier, Michael Branson, has some real sharp, very nice clippers. And we've never before trimmed the dew claws, never thought it was necessary, but Michael pointed out that they can get hooked on things just like they do on dogs. So it's best to keep them trimmed. Will he give the hoop? Kind of. Aha. Will he stay in balance? Will he try to pull back? He's trying to pull back. We work with Susie and Sela all the time on lifting their hooves, but for obvious reasons, us gals don't work with Rusty too often on it. We just try to do this process whenever needed using lariats and halters and strong, helpful men. Time for the rasp. Will he lift again? Yeah. They kind of get bursts of energy. They try to get away and then, from our experience, they tend to settle down. He's actually foaming a little bit at the mouth, probably stress. Back feet. Uh-oh, back feet. For yeah. the back feet, I really think we should use the squeeze chute. Okay. Let's okay, do that. so Aaron, uh, stop the camera and help us get Rusty's head over here and the the uh, panel squeezing him toward these uh, metal these other metal portable panels. Okay, our squeeze chute is keeping him against the, the portable panel, the stout ones. The white panel is also steel, but not as stout. I was worried that he'd get his horns stuck in these rails out of stress, but he seems to be complacent at this moment. I've got a lead line on his halter and a lariat with gloves on to avoid rope burns. A lariat on his horns. You can get squeeze chutes for minis, but it's not easy, especially on the West Coast. So we've just made do, as we usually do, with the equipment that we can find and assemble. Now, okay, he's trying to kick out now, but from our experience, he'll stop kicking. Yeah, just a reaction. There's a good little setup right here. It's pin him in here. 
I'm really glad I put this lariat around his horns because there's no soft tissue involved and I can pull hard without worrying about involving his eyes, his neck, his ears. I'm glad too. Aaron is just trying to calm him down by scratching him, which I'm sure is helping. Take his mind off. Him. Yeah, he doesn't have that, that bulgy eyeball look. I don't see the whites of his eyes. He seems okay on this moment. That's it? Yeah. Okay, we'll do Susie next. Okay, but, but let's think about where we're going to put him <laughs> and where we're going to do them. Before I let go of him, Good idea. let's stop the camera and Aaron, uh, Sila's. Now we're working with Mama Susie, doing the fronts, the dew claws. Then trimming the hooves, she's uh, not going to go a lot easier, but she is a horned animal, so you have to watch those horns. I've got just a halter on, no lariat. We moved this white steel panel from this side to this side. I left Rusty over there. He's okay. He's not real stressed about the whole thing right now. Although you could probably see from that camera's view that Susie's getting scours. I expected that. Scours is diarrhea for cows when they get upset. portable panels come from corrals to go and they are nice and strong since they're steel but we only use them for temporary fencing because they do rust I am sorry to say they do rust and we have to constantly clean off the rust and the flakes and paint them again so we keep them under cover unless we have a particular reason to use them Susie's halter is just a halter that I bought a long, long time ago for my fillies. It fits her fine. Sela's halter, you'll see, since she's still kind of small, is uh, adjusted with a bolt on the top of the nose to keep that uh, nose opening smaller. Otherwise, it tends to fall off her nose. to know where to cut with these guys. What are you, um, what, what's your uh, signpost there? What do you, how do you figure out where to cut them? Do a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you just know, like as a farrier, but if I were to tell somebody else, just, you can see all the exterior hoof wall sticking up above the sole. Just nip all the extra off. Snipping off all the extra hoof yeah. wall yeah, above the sole. it's higher than their sole, but. Do you trim any other cows, Michael? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, everything. Uh, I, uh, I'm curious, <laughs> when you have a chance, tell me where there are cows that you trim. Because I don't have too many buddies around here that I know that have cows. They're not like this. They're like a real cow. Watch, uh, watch Rusty behind you. Okay. Yeah. Good looking out. Okay, now we're ready for the back. Do like a rag? Is, like... is it off? Sure. Uh, uh, rag. No, it's right <laughs> right huh? I it's have paper right towels. Now. Okay, can you stop the camera? We're going to wipe off the diarrhea and uh, put her in the squeeze chute. Yeah, and then I'll pull her good. Okay. Calm down. Okay, it's uh, Susie's back legs now. We did have to clean off the diarrhea for the sake of the farrier. Keep paper towels around. We're using the squeeze chute to help keep her body against the fence on her right side.
just behind the cameraman is Sela. She's been haltered up and she's being uh, massaged. Keeping her calm. This will be her first time, so I'm not sure how she's going to behave. Although, we're pretty sure that he's going to be able to get her front feet up easily. Not sure about the back feet. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Proof is in the pudding. Hey. There's that burst of energy. And then she'll calm down. Yeah, and then she generally calms down, gives up. Ah, uh, okay, now I'm afraid her horns are through here. Now I do need help here, I think. Yeah, okay. Okay, you hold, and we're going to switch uh, rolls here. It's a carabiner. Yeah, it's a little rusted. A little bit rusty. Okay. Yeah. Carabiner is I got now. Uh, usually a pretty strong tool to use. Okay, will she let him lift long enough to clean out that sole? Damn it. There, you do that on video? <laughs> yep. You getting rusty behind you. That's fine. Mr. Rusty, Papa Rusty is staying nearby, but not being real aggressive. Just guarding his harem. If you'll look on past Urban Cowgirl shows, you'll see that I had my vet, Kristen Wallace, give Rusty a vasectomy. I wanted him to uh, remain hormonally a bull, but I didn't want to have him inbreed his daughter, Sela. So, he is still king of the harem here, but he cannot produce an inbred mini zebu. Oh, she's good. She's good. Okay, can uh, Aaron, why don't you stop the camera? We'll put Sela in that vicinity. Okay, now this is Sela's first time in the shoot. We don't want to really freak her out today, even if we don't trim her. That's okay. We just want to desensitize her to all these tools, this feeling, get to know Mike. The farrier, good. Give her scratches and massages. We'll take this one tiny baby step at a time. If she starts freaking out, Mike, let's uh, just show her that it's not necessary to be afraid, to have confidence. Have her feet ever been picked up? Oh, every day. For weeks, we've been picking up her front feet. Her back feet, we've been working on, but uh, she still resists. One thing to pick them up is another thing to trim them. Yeah. But she, knock on wood so far, she seems okay. You want to hold it? Yes! Baby Seal is first trimming! Yeah, she has good little feet. She's got good little feet, says Michael. Keep them short, then they won't get all long. And then, yeah. then they're actually able to wear down. I think once they get too long, then, it, then they have to rip or tear. You know, yeah. To leave. My cows get to move around day and night. That's what it should be. Yeah, it's, that's what it should be. But Michael is saying we should keep the hooves short so that they can wear down. Or also, when they get long, they like pull on their legs, and it's not good for the tendons. Really... Bad for their tendons Especially if they, they get, get too long. When they get heavier, too, it's hard to. Is all that weight coming down, pulling against their tendons? Okay, so we have them now on a maintenance program, including little baby Sela. Yeah, good. I didn't know what to expect, and I'm not going to jump the gun here and say all is going well, but so far, we're at least getting the fronts done. 
Yeah, notice she doesn't have scours, which surprises me. Wow, she should be the most nervous. She seems to be less stressed than her mom. Are our little mini cow, so when I larry at them, I usually use this little mini rope. It's just a kid's rope. Okay, will she let us do the top? Does anybody need a glove? And my, my concern is that she's going to get a, a foot in her stress hooked around a panel rail. So let's. Uh, around my face. Uh, I don't think she can kick you that high. Well, maybe she can. Okay, let's, if you just lift it slightly, maybe she'll settle down, maybe not. Maybe we won't do the backs today. Here's that. There you go. Easy, easy, easy. She's smashing her face really badly. Yeah, you can just rub her, face, rub her head, keep her busy. I've been doing that the whole time, but she's smashing it into the front. Okay. I'm not worried about that. Her horns aren't big enough, but her eyeball, I am worried about. No, I mean, oh, I see. And you see this? Okay, I'm done with that. we got to do something else about that. Got it? Yeah. Well, did you do both? I got to do the other foot. Okay, one more. I'll let you. Should she's we... fine. Just once she'll calm down. Like she'll have a burst of energy, then she'll yeah. calm down. Yeah. As long as during those bursts you protect them from getting hurt. Yeah. You can pretty much count on them calming down. And then, like you. Uh, uh oh, here comes poop. <laughs> and you want to stay calm, you know, that keeps them calm. Poop, not as bad as her mom again. Solid. It's uh, somewhat solid. Should I, uh, like a surgical nurse, hand you your tool? Yeah, she's fine. She's good. She'll, she'll, she'll give up right now. Oh. Easy now, Sila. Watch your eyeball, Aaron. Once she calms down, it doesn't take long. It takes longer just to get the foot. A little bit of rasping. All right, she's good. Sila got her first tooth trimming. Yeah, okay, was, take the no big deal. Ultra off. We'll let them out with their papa. Yeah, all their feet are level. Do claws are down. How often do you think we're going to have to do this? We'll have to take a look and see. We'll, we'll just watch. With these, you know, because we've never done them, we'll have to eyeball it, see how they're wearing down. Right. Depends, it depends how much they run run around, you know? They run around a ton. And probably <laughs> in the summer, they would wear down more if they were if they were trimmed. Yes. Because the ground's harder. Well, now. except that I irrigate. <laughs> oh, never mind. So, yeah. That's that. Summer, fall, winter, spring. It's always green around here. Well, now we'll let... Uh, Zila and Susie go to their papa yeah, they're stuck. and uh, clean up. And I hope you learned how to do it if you need to do it. Because today it was a successful hoof trimming of my mini Zeboos. And that's Sonia Soklo, the Urban Cowgirl, triple W, UrbanCowgirlChannel.com. Michael Branson, my farrier from Boulder Creek, California. Worming and fly control for mini Zeboos. We're going to show you how we worm the Zeboos with Iver uh, Max or Ivo Mac. They're all the same. They're a liquid um, injectable dewormer, but we don't inject it. We simply use a needle in the bottle. We draw out the amount we want. Then we take the needle off. 
being very careful with needles. Then with the syringe, and this is Rusty, I think he'll be okay. I might have to go and lariat his horns. It's all right, Rusty. Now, I'll tell you what. He's not sure why I'm approaching him, so I'm using that tried and true protective trick of a garbage can lid. Here we go. Behind his hump, I just squeezed out the liquid. We'll show you from a different angle when we do Susie and or Sela. So that's worming. Now what else uh, do we do on a regular basis every three to six months? depending on season. We're not going to do it today because it's almost winter, uh, but I found out in the middle of the summer by going to my Zebu Digest that silence, C-Y-L-E-N-C-E, -E, is a really good pour on insecticide for cows, not for horses, not designed for horses. When we do silence, we have to follow strict instructions which are provided on the back of the silence container, uh, tells you a whole lot about how to be careful when you pour this insecticide on. In some respects, we almost uh, feel like we have to have a hazmat suit on. Uh, we just don't want to get it on us, but properly poured on, Properly poured on the cows, it does do wonders. We do it every three weeks during the fly season. We wear gloves. We wear clothing. We wear safety glasses. And uh, we follow strict instructions on directions of use. And how to apply? To use the package dispenser, hold the container upright, remove the cap from the dosage chamber, and gently squeeze the sides of the bottle to fill the chamber to the desired dosage. Apply the required amount of solution directly along the top of the back and top of the head of the animal. So we do that. We do that every three weeks or so in fly season. We put netted fly masks on our cows during the day and take them off at night. They get pretty good about letting you handle them. And uh, we size them depending upon the cow. Some, sometimes I have to take a given fly mask and go to my sewing machine, make it a little smaller, a little more narrow. Uh, but we're pretty much able to, without using traps of any sort, without using powders or, or regular sprays in the cow pen, that kind of thing, we just uh, apply this liquid to their backs. And for the Ivamec, similar. We do it every three to six months. And uh, if I see a constant, consistent diarrhea, then I'll do it more often. But lately I haven't had that problem. I'm uh, happy with the way these two... Uh, products work to help give my mini Zebus comfort year round. Now we're going to turn off the camera, we're going to get the heifers out here and uh, do the, the Ivamec with the heifers. Here we go, uh, four cc's for Susie. We let Rusty out. Susie's going to walk away. It's also four cc's for Sela. So whoever lets me walk up to them Again, we could have haltered them, but we didn't feel it was necessary. Let's see if Sela will let me walk up to her. Or Sue's her mom. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Well. There. I did it on Sela. You can do it pretty quickly. Just want to rub it in a little bit with the top of your syringe. Remember, there's no needle. You bring the liquid in with the needle, then you just pour it on behind their hump. So if there are any issues on doing it on Susie, we'll let you know. Otherwise, now you know how we do the worming and the fly control for our mini Zebus. Well, this is Susie. We did put the halter on so we'd be able to show you, even if she walks away, which she's a little bit concerned. Squeeze it. 
work it in under the fur and we have wormed Susie. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.